Welcome, my friends. If you've heard of the cosmic struggle of the forces of light against the forces of darkness, Ashtar Sharon, the channeling of the Jedi, the invaders, and the fact that good cosmic guests are about to arrest Kabbalah and the Deep State, this is the video for you. Because there may be a global scam, that's what this video is about. So the world is on the alert today because of what's happened in the last few months. Some call this time just another test for humanity, which will soon be over, and everything will go back to normal. And some say that the return to the normal life will be no more, and we are on the threshold of a new world order. There are those who see in this time the Great Awakening, when people, pulled out of the usual circle of life, suddenly began to realize something. The latter are closer to the truth than the others. Our so-called collective consciousness has made a qualitative leap. Some of the moments that were behind the scenes have now become obvious and have left the conspiracy section. Humanity has suddenly seen that there is some kind of world government that controls the lives of most countries in the world. The influence of transnational corporations over states has suddenly taken on a clear connotation. Not long ago, everyone laughed at the talk about Masons, Illuminati, and secret societies, and today so many people have seen that this information is not just removed from the code of secrecy, but also representatives of such clubs openly speak about their activities and membership. The Committee 300, the Club of Rome, the Club of Bilderberg, the Bohemian Grove meeting is no longer a conspiracy or a mystery. We live in interesting times. So there's some elite who run the world through their power networks, who gather in closed clubs, who set the order for the entire population of the Earth. In fact, they are invaders who hold power by force and place their people in their places, denying control to anyone in their circle. Very important point. They all engage in occult or occult practices. The rituals of the Bohemian Grove are not to be missed, as are the many strange opening ceremonies of the Olympics, the cherry on the cake being the 2012 event in London, and of course, the world's leading stars at the opening of the Super Bowl, Eurovision, and other events. Madonna, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, and other cults are the regulars of such events. So the elites behind the scenes are not just holding power, but are also involved in a cult. They are the ones who are imposing an atheistic view of the world with theories of evolution and the Big Bang. And they are more than religious people, but they only worship the devil, and the cult in question dates back to ancient times. This cult is described in the Bible by the service of Astarte and Vala. It was widespread in Babylon and in the neighboring lands. There are more than 40 references to this cult in the scriptures. Who are Astartha and Baal? They are one of the first children of the fallen angels. They are the essence of Nephilim. Asteria is the goddess of fertility and debauchery. By the way, other names of Asteria, Astarus, Istarus, Astartus, Hecate. Here's an interesting task. Find a photo of the Hecate statues and compare them with the Statue of Liberty. Baal is the god of fertility, war, and sun. Astartha and Baal had opposite sex hypostases, sometimes portrayed as women with a beard. You know, what are the current LGBT trends? Astartha was also sometimes depicted with a beard, which was considered the height of attractiveness. Now, compare that to what's now being actively promoted through show business and Hollywood. But back to Astarte, she's Astaroth, she's Ashtar. Today, representatives of different faiths, as well as philosophical and esoteric currents, speak of the struggle of the forces of light with the forces of darkness, it is true. But who do the esoterics consider to be the representatives of the forces of light? They call them the Confederacy of the Pleiadians. Once the fallen angels had already come to the people, mingled with them, seducing women, and gave them some knowledge and skills that eventually led to the terrible corruption and death of the first world in the flood, including the death of Atlantis. The people of that world embraced them with open arms, not recognizing that they were Lucifer's servants. These Nephilim, fallen angels, taught witchcraft, cooking herbs, astrology, weapons manufacturing, and so on. 
They were beautiful in appearance, the women melted from their attraction. They did not come as terrible monsters from the underworld, but the children of these angels were terrible. They were doing things like rudeness, making hybrids and eating people, which is basically what the legends of the giants are about, and they were all wild at one point. It was a great delight. And so in our day and age, the Nephilim will come as more developed brothers in mind to give again some knowledge. As in those ancient times, they carried enlightenment and light. One of them, Ashtar Shirin, who is in contact with the people, is presented as the commander of the fleet from the constellation Pleiades, leading the confederation of the light forces. He comes under his already recognizable name, drawn by those who have come to him. On 26 November 1977, the program was interrupted for 47 seconds on British Southern Television. Ashtar Sheeran warned humanity that it was urgent to destroy all weapons of evil, and that time was short. It is still unclear what happened on the air, but today there is a whole movement of so-called channelers who make contact with these so-called Pleiadians. There is also the movement of the Janarians and other UFO religions. They talk about peace, harmony, and their coming soon. The rulers of the world also talk all the time about peace and security, but they only sow wars and divisions. There are famous bloggers on Russian YouTube who talk about Astarte Charan and his alleged struggle with the forces of darkness. Other historical figures tell us that the Pleiadians are already here and are fighting in Earth's orbit, but are invisible to us. Many, of course, are tired of everything that is happening on Earth, of how hard it is to live in injustice, and they believe in the brothers in the brain who are stronger, smarter, and kinder, and will surely save us. Commentator Stephen Ben Known shared excerpts from the banned Book of Enoch. Enoch acted as a mediator between the fallen angels who rebelled against God and the righteous angels who served and carried out the Creator's orders. And the two hundred angels came down from heaven and took women of their choice, and they crossed with them, and the line of the Nephilim was born. The fallen angels taught mankind not only crafts. Azazel taught men to make swords, knives, shields, and also works of art from metal. The second passage describes Enoch's march south to the place where he observed a curious phenomenon. The sky was burning day and night. This can be interpreted as the southern hemisphere summertime in Antarctica, when the sun shines 24 hours a day. The phenomenon of the glowing sky refers to the southern glow that can be seen in the southern latitudes. This episode in the historical past of man ended in a heavenly struggle. The righteous angels fought against the fallen, and the latter were defeated. As a punishment, God has imprisoned them in Tartarus, and this prison is probably somewhere in Antarctica. There's this interesting manipulation that rulers often resort to, called predictive programming. It should be mentioned that the management of mass consciousness within the entire population of the Earth is not an easy task, but with a certain set of tools is more than feasible. One of these tools is Hollywood. It's hard to overestimate the impact on our worldview. It's truly colossal. Many of the thoughts and beliefs that we believe to be ours were actually put into our box through the movies. Hollywood helps to load on our servers both certain motives and patterns of behavior and expectations. So, the expectations and the subsequent realization. For the last 70 years, Hollywood has been bombarding us with films of various genres, including alien fiction. What did we learn from these films? That aliens are evil and kind, that their visit is either an invasion or an arrival, that they have different appearances, there are parasite invaders, and there are older brothers in the head. Some of them came to destroy, and some to teach and to create. And the fact that believers who warn of the dangers of such contact are crazy, which is very clearly shown in the film Contact. And there's all these bearded rascals standing with a sign saying, Repent. End is near. You know the level of manipulation? You've already been told how to treat these messages. It's all in our heads and it seems so logical and so understandable. But it's just not very realistic yet. Well, the world pandemic was once something out of the realm of fiction. So, if we assume that all these films are not made to entertain us, but to shape a certain reality for us, 
They first create it mentally somewhere in the world of ideas in our heads, and then they are the real embodiment of that idea. So we're being prepped for invasion, folks. And all these calls about incidents from the official media are just reinforcing the effect that Hollywood created. We can only expect it in the relatively near future. When will it be? This year, in 2021, nobody knows. The main question is who will appear to humanity under the guise of an extraterrestrial civilization? Write your answers to this account in the comments, and also subscribe to the channel. Put your fingers up. Bye.